So, I've been meaning to do a video like this for a while anyway, but I uh, wanted to do some sort of primer for beginners. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. <clears throat> Different types of grippers. In this video, I'm going to be showing you stuff on this adjustable spring gripper. The handles look the same to any of the grippers you're going to get from Iron Mind or GHP or whatever, but uh, all of my grippers are pretty much off being rated right now, so I don't have a really light one to demonstrate. So I'm going to do it with this, but what I'm going to show you will work for any gripper. <clears throat> okay, so for starters, set widths. So if you just grab a gripper, pick it up, close it, it's called a no set or a table no set or TNS. Uh, it's like the ultimate display of mastery of a gripper. If you can do a TNS with no assistance from your freehand, then you own that gripper. Um, different set widths. The most common ones are going to be a credit card, the GHP block, and then a 20 millimeter. So what that means is, like for Iron Mind, if you want to start a file on the number three, you have to do a credit card set. So you can use your free hand to get the gripper partially closed, and you can slowly open it back up to the point that you can slide a credit card between the handles like that. Then you close. So if you want to start a file on the number three or higher, you have to do a credit card set at least. Uh, you can TNS it if you want in your certification video, but you still have to show that the card can go between the handles. So don't rush this. If you're going to train like this, get in the habit of going slow and demonstrating that the card goes between the handles when you're filming. Otherwise, they'll, uh, they'll fail your lift and it won't count. Same principles with the other blocks. So, freehand to close, open back up until you can pass the block through, obviously, close. Freehand, open slightly, pass the block through, close. Also, get in the habit of practicing filming your closes. Because a lot of people do is they'll want to certify Iron Mind or GHP or Mash Monster. It'll be like the first time they ever film. And they'll be doing this crap out here and you can't see it. And by the time they get it in the camera view, it's not closed. Or you can't tell. Something like that. Or like that. You want to get in the habit of practicing where you can clearly demonstrate the handles are touching just like that the more you practice that the better all right so that's set widths in filming um, another way you can train is using negatives so a negative would be like you take a gripper that you can't close and you use your free hand to get it closed and then you let go and you just try your best to hold it as long as you can. It's an okay way to train, but it's a good way to get hurt. And I don't recommend it for beginners. You should wait until you're familiar with grippers and know your limits. Uh, or else you're going to really hurt yourself. Uh, because these are torsion spring grippers. And if that gripper is going to open, it doesn't care that your fingers are there. It's going to rip your pinky basically out of socket. Uh, or any of your other fingers. So be careful with that. Um... Different brands of grippers. So, uh, I got this at a contest. This is a Heavy Grips gripper. It looks like your standard torsion spring gripper. Uh, these are okay. The handles are cheap. The springs are cheap. Uh, heavy Grips, Gripzilla, Grip Genie, any of the other grippers that you find on Amazon, like cheap, they all use the same springs pretty much. Uh, so if you're going to buy cheap grippers, like if you're not sure you want to commit to the sport or whatever, buy heavy grips. Um, they're cheaper and they're the same springs. 
don't buy a Grip Genie. Um, I mean, you can buy a Grip Genie, like they're colorful, they're fine for training, but the handles are also very narrow, and I'll get into that in a minute, but uh, to me, there's just better training tools out there. So if you want to save some money and get the same grippers, buy heavy grips. If you want colorful grippers, like if that makes you feel good about your training, get Grip Genie or Gripzilla or whatever, but I'll actually stay away from Gripzilla. Don't buy Gripzilla at all. Just buy Grip Genie if you want colorful grippers. Uh, all right. What else? Yeah, here's a Grip Genie. I'll show you this. So, spring is black, but it's the same spring you'll find all the other grippers uh, at this that look like this and have this narrow, these narrow handles. Um, I have a Grip Genie just because this is like the highest level and I just want to close one just to say I did it. Um, yeah, we'll get more into the differences later, but different brands. So that's Heavy Grips, Grips Genie. There's Iron Mind, which of course we're all familiar with. Kind of the gold standard of grippers. I think that's what it actually says on the package. <laughs> yeah, good marketing because I just rattled that off. Uh, high quality handles, high quality springs. Uh, their springs aren't used by any other brand. They make them themselves. They get them manufactured uh, only for their grippers. Good knurling, uh, just overall solid gripper. Can't go wrong with those. Another brand, GHP. Uh, these are wider. Like when I say wider, I mean the distance between the handles. They're wider. They have their own springs uh, manufactured for them. Uh, and the knurling is really aggressive. These are some of my favorite grippers. I actually like them more than Iron Mind uh, because I train for wide sets like TNS, credit card set. So training with these makes uh, TNSing and credit card setting with Iron Mind grippers feel much easier. Uh, these go from levels 1 to 10. Uh, only one person, Carl Myers Co., has closed the number 10. Um, so if you want to do that, you got some work to do. You can certify with GHP once you can close a level 7. I'm close to certifying on the level 8. Which I think maybe 20 people have done. Other brands of grippers. Uh, we have Robert Barabin. I think I pronounced that correctly. These are cool grippers. Uh, a lot like Iron Mind. The handles are a little bit wider. Uh, they're 20 millimeter and Iron Mines are 19. Uh, it's an extra millimeter that you have to close on Iron Mind. This is an extra millimeter you don't have to close on the Robert Barabin. Uh, I have this one because it's a good rating at 186. I'll tell you more about ratings in a minute. But, uh, yeah, it just rounds out my collection. These are built really solidly. Probably my... I said GP, GHP is my favorite, but you know what? Actually, I'm going to take that back. My favorite grippers are these. Standard grippers by Canon Powerworks. This one has holes drilled in it because it had some uh, hardware mounted to it that I'll show you in a minute. Uh, these are made by Canon Powerworks. These are awesome. Uh, the, I love them. They have, the knurling is perfect. They're built well. Uh, you can't go wrong with these either. And I buy so much from Canon Powerworks, it just makes sense. Um, yeah, here's one that isn't drilled out. So, got the SG logo. <clears throat> All these are named after different elements, metal elements. So this is a tungsten, which is a very strong metal. So this is the strongest uh, gripper that Canon Powerworks makes. Okay, so now you're probably asking yourself, uh, what are all the little tags for? What do those mean? So these tags, um, just grab them. So these tags are the RGC, or the rating of which, how much weight it takes to touch these handles together. Uh, they stick the gripper in this apparatus, they put a strap on this handle, and they add weight until the handles close. Then however much weight that took is the RGC. So that's what this tag means. So it took 148 pounds to touch the handles of this Iron Mine number three together. Why does that matter? Well, imagine bench pressing a weight and you didn't know how much weight it was. 
that's what it's for. If you just close a gripper like this, heavy grips, it says 200 pounds. It's not. That's what this spring is rated at some way. We don't know how it was rated to get 200 pounds. The way I just mentioned about putting the weight on the handles, it's a repeatable way uh, to do it, and everyone can kind of speak the same language. This says 200 pounds. It doesn't mean anything to me. Gripzilla and some of the cheap grippers, they also have a weight like stamped on here. It doesn't mean anything. Even Iron Mine. I'll show you this package that a gripper came in. It tells you how much weight each one is supposed to be, but we don't know how they came up with that. So the RGC way of measuring your gripper is the best because we're all speaking the same language and it makes training a lot easier. So like right now, I'm working on closing this uh, GHP level 8, which is rated at 174 RGC. So I know I can close this Iron Mine 3.5 that's rated 165, but I can't close this one. So my max is somewhere between 165 and 174 um, based on the set width. So I know that I can train um, with like a, a 148, a 159 for low reps, and I'll get stronger as I work on my goal toward this 174. It just helps you train. It helps you program your training. It's not required. You don't have to get your grippers rated, but I like it because it just gives me more control over what I'm doing with my training. What else? Accessories. So, I showed you this gripper here. It has the holes drilled in it. This had hole drills, holes drilled in it because it had <clears throat> this stuff attached to it. This is a very fancy choker system. So what it does is... This wrench. As I turn the nut here, the handles are going to get closer and closer together. Meaning, I have control to train from different distances, different widths. Um, instead of using my free hand to try to get it there, this choker will just leave it at that same spot, and I can focus more on training from that width. That's all this is for. So like with a new gripper, like this is a 177, this is a goal that I have to get, be able to close this one from credit card at least. Um, I can start training with it at a narrower width, and then move out as I get stronger. So I can start at 20 millimeters. Once I can do that consistently, I'll try for 38 millimeters. Once I can do that consistently, I'll try for uh, 58, which is about credit card width. And then after that, I'll take the choker hardware off, and then I'll just work on TNS in the thing. But that's what this hardware is for. There's other ways to do chokers using like hose clamps. Um, it works fine. It's just more work. That's more expensive to buy them that way, but I prefer it. Some other tools that can help you train. I have a video on this, so I'm not going to go into huge detail on it, but it's called the bumper. You stick this thing between the handles, turn the dial. As you turn the dial, it gets wider, eventually to the point where it won't come out of the spring. Then every time you turn it after that, it adds about a pound of resistance to your gripper. So if you know the RGC of the gripper, you can add about like up to seven pounds to it. So my 165, three and a half, can essentially be used as a 172, three and a half. Saves so you from having to buy so many grippers. Uh, Canon Powerworks makes these too. Um, basic training methodology. If you want to train to do lots of reps, train to do lots of reps. But if you want to get stronger, you got to do like three to five reps. Uh, it's just like powerlifting. So, whatever your goals are, you know, if you want to train to do lots of reps, that's cool. If you want to train to be able just to hold the gripper close for a long time, do that. Uh, but if you want to get stronger and you want to progress to doing harder and harder grippers, low reps, high intensity. That's the way to go. Then I think, like, last but not least, uh, the most important aspect of training is recovery. And 
you can't be training grippers every day. Uh, maybe the first couple of weeks when you're new to it, uh, but it's not going to work. You're going to get fatigued, you're going to overtrain, and once you're overtrained with your hands, you're not going to get any stronger. So, um, go hard twice a week. I think that'll be sufficient in your, to get you off to a good start in training and also get you in a good disciplined pattern where you're not training every day, hurting your hands, losing progress, getting dis getting discouraged, and then quitting. So that's what we don't, we don't want that to happen. Um, I think that's really it. You know, you'll see people use chalk. I have some chalk up here. Chalk is fine. You can use it in training. Um, it helps the gripper stay in your hand, not slide around. Uh, but it's not a requirement. You don't have to use chalk. And then you'll see me in a lot of my videos. I smell ammonia salts. Um, smell it smelling salts. It hurts. And it gives your body like an adrenaline boost. And you get a little bit stronger for just a short period of time. It doesn't hurt you. It doesn't hurt you to breathe the stuff in unless you sit around smelling it all day. But you have to be a weirdo to do that. Uh, so... Try it. Might work for you. Um, actually, I wouldn't use ammonia salts until you were very comfortable with grippers or any other exercise. Because if you're doing something with bad form, you do it harder, you're going to get hurt. So wait on the salts until you know what you're doing. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. If you have any questions, reach out to me. But I wanted to do a primer video like this for a long time. Um, so I thought I got around to doing it. Yeah, forgot something. I was going to talk about widths between the handles. So if I take... Uh, this number three here, this is actually the number three I certified on. Um, if I measure with this caliper here, uh, wow, that's a wide number three. Uh, 76 millimeters or so. It's actually very wide. I don't think I've ever measured that before. That's cool. Uh, yeah, so that's that's pretty wide for an iron mine gripper. Um, if I take my other number three, it's going to be narrower. Yeah, see, it's like 73. If I measure a GHP, It's much wider, three millimeters wider. Uh, if I measure a grip genie, way narrower, narrower, almost more than ten mil millimeters narrower. The point is, the wider your gripper, the stronger you're going to get. Um, the narrow grippers are fine to train with. Like if you're not really taking it that seriously, you just want some strong hands and you can find cheap grippers. If they're narrow, that's cool. Uh, but if you want to get really strong, if you can close from a wider, if you can just close a wider gripper, you're stronger, period. So I like wider ones, but I also have very big hands. Not everybody's hands are the same size, obviously. Uh, some people have hands that aren't big enough to close like a TNS on a, an Iron Mind gripper or a GHP. So, you just have to find what works for you, but try to use the widest gripper that you can. Uh, Alright, I think that's... Nope, forgot one more thing. Um, yeah. Which way do you hold a gripper? So you'll see, this is more rounded on this side. It's straighter. This is the side you want closest to your thumb. Let me get two grippers and show you the difference. All right, so the straight leg and the dog leg. See the difference? You want the straighter one to be the one closest to your thumb. That's the way they were intended to be closed. 